A new epic commander and a set of new events are on their way to Rise of Kingdoms. Stick around in this video for everything you need to know. Hello my friends and welcome back, I'm Chiskool Gaming, and this video has been sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms. And a big thank you to Festool for letting me know that this update was waiting for me in the official in-game Rise of Kingdoms forums. The anniversary festival is on its way, and about a week after the patch, the events will begin. There's going to be a Treasure Outlaws event. Uh, thieves have appeared through all the Kingdom's holy sites, and we have to retrieve the loot. This sounds like it could maybe be a new style of event. It sounds like... An event probably where you're summoning some thieves, though, and maybe just battling them down and spending some action points. You know, just have some action points on hand. The 2021 Rock Yearbook. Claim your permanently preserved yearbook to look back and share your journey. You know, I've recorded my yearbook every single year, and I'll have a card up in the top. It's kind of hard to believe. Three full years of Rise of Kingdoms. Ode to Valor. Be ready to battle at dawn with the collection of anniversary festival Music? Music and battling. Okay, I generally have the sounds off in-game. Maybe I'll have to turn those on. Metropolitan Fair. Share your city layouts. Hey, if you're looking for a cool city layout, I did a competition for some of the best city layouts. Now, granted, if everybody copies it, none of these people are going to win, but uh, card up in the top if you're looking for some inspiration for city layouts. The Celebratory Spoils. Log in for seven consecutive days to obtain the new Epic Commander, Queen Tamar of Georgia. See, that's what you're really here for is, just well, you said new Epic Commander, and yes, I did. Also, the Lucky Dice are coming back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Man, I got a lot to talk about here. I'm going to tell you exactly what I think Queen Tamar of Georgia is going to be as soon as I finish this section, okay? So let me get to the end of this. Uh, the Lucky Dice is an event that has been here before you spend gems and you can get city themes and cosmetics of a card up in the top for the last time they had that, which was ages ago. I can't believe it's been so long since they've done this event, but it is rare, and you can get some achievements for getting city themes, so uh, I, I guess that makes sense. Uh, the Anniversary Shop lets you exchange for a variety of prizes, including a new city theme, which we will definitely review. So if you're getting value from this video and you want to see that city theme as soon as that information is available, then you should subscribe to the channel and consider throwing a like onto this video. Dream Sojourn. Get mementos by collecting resources in your city, gathering resources on the map, and defeating barbarians. You can use them in the To the Stars event. Okay. Okay, so it looks like there's going to be a premium currency, probably, and a other currency that you exchange, if I had to guess, in order to potentially get the city skin. The puzzle event is coming back, and also arms training, Lohar. All of these things, by the way, we have covered on our channel many, many times. But Let's talk for a moment and divert from the remainder of these patch notes, which we definitely need to talk about, to tell you exactly what I think Queen Tamar of Georgia is going to be. It's definitely cool that we've got an event to get a new epic commander, and you're probably wondering, like, okay, just cool, what, what different talent trees will they have? Because this will hugely impact how usable the epic commander is, and... I took a look at the different epic commanders we have in game, and I've got a theory. I also did some reading about Queen Tamar of Georgia, also known as Tamar the Great, who is idealized, by the way, as bringing both cultural revolution and known for being a warrior. So there's a blend of culture to the point of almost being like uh, sort of ushering in a renaissance period, sort of. Uh, and also being a warrior. So that blend of things I think is important. But first, just to talk about what we already have in game and what I think they're going to do, we've already got three infantry commanders. And I guessed, by the way, that we needed an infantry commander. And then, what do you know, they dropped in Beer and Ironside, and I guess correctly he would be infantry. We also have three archer commanders. We also have three cavalry commanders. We have four integration commanders and only one leadership commander. At the epic tier, of course. So I think because she was both a warrior and also brought in sort of this cultural revolution, I think leadership makes sense. I also think to represent the economic progress that she might have ushered in, there might be a gathering component for the yellow colored tree. So 
I think gathering makes sense and would be valuable to everybody. I think leadership is something we don't have too much of. Actually, there's two leadership commanders. There's, there's Osman and also uh, CPO, right? Two leadership commanders there. So I think that leadership makes sense. And the weird thing about these blue trees is that like we have eight or nine skill tree epic commanders. And we have, I think, four, three or four support tree uh, epic commanders already. But I think support would make sense. I don't think mobility makes sense. We have a ton of skill tree commanders already. I mean, they could just do another one, I guess. Uh, I think, and I don't, I don't think attack tree makes sense, okay? I think that the support tree makes the most sense. Leadership, support gathering. That's what I think we're going to get based on the reading I was able to do on uh, Tamar the Great or Tamar of Georgia. I think that that'll be a really nice balance also for the epics that we have. She could be very, very good in the early game. Presumably, she'll end up in gold keys and silver keys at some point. But for now, we know she's going to be in the anniversary event, and that's how you'll unlock her. So unlike Diao Chan, who was a crossover commander that, like, I looked at my old commander guides, and I was like, man, nobody is watching my Diao Chan guide. And I was like, oh, that's because you can't get her anymore. I think that this commander will become available through keys, so you may want to save some of those up as well. I'm quite confident you'll be able to use your Universal Epic Commander sculptures on Tamar the Great or Tamar of Georgia when she lands in-game. I would be very surprised if you couldn't do that. So I would save up some Epic Commander sculptures as well if you think you might invest in her and... Just to give a sense of what a gathering support tree commander can do, man, Joan of Arc's been real good for a long time, even with the integration tree, and I think leadership, leadership is probably better, almost certainly better, than integration. So leadership support gathering will be really strong, and if the skills are right, could be very good. But I don't want to overhype it. I'm just going off of their name. The Champions of Olympia is on its way back, and they've adjusted down the number of wins required to get the weekly quest done. Thank goodness. Now there's only four required for the full reward. They adjusted the event time to Friday to Sunday period. Um, and I just want to say, this is one of those moments where players say they want something, but they don't actually know what they want. Players said they wanted Champions of Olympia all the time, and for like two weeks, we wanted that, and then everybody got bored of it and was like, I don't want to do this anymore, except a small number of people. So... I get why they're doing the Friday to Sunday change here so that people don't get burned out on having to like grind out wins, six of them every single week. I think these are good changes. Uh, four wins is better than having to do six. And also the Friday to Sunday period means the number of people playing at any moment in time should be up, which means that we probably get better matchmaking, which I think everybody wants. Uh, I hope that that works out. They have changed the skill classifications. Uh, now... Skills will be classified based on troop type in a four attunement. Infantry, cavalry, archers, and mixed. I actually really, 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 really like this. There's a bunch of mechanics in the old version of Champions of Olympia that was maybe making it a little more complex than it really needed to be. Like, did it add value through that complexity? And I think this is a great way of just saying, okay, okay, we already had different skills focused on these different things. Let's just... Let's just make it really simple and call it Cav Archers Mixed and, I mean, Mixed, okay, whatever, and Infantry, right? So I, I think that could be a very welcome change. I'm eager to see how that actually influences the skills or if that's just changes to the names. Uh, a new surrender system was added. You can tap out, baby. Just tap the mat, you know? Tap out. I'm out. You got me. I'm pinned down. If the match is going really poorly, you can surrender, which is something they already had in Soroli anyways, like a restart thing. So now, now they've got a surrender option. A new preset lineup system has been added, allowing you to pre-configure up to three troops for more convenient gameplay. All right. I mean, that sounds fine. Optimize the battle performance. 10 out of 10. Very eager for that. I mean, there's little things that, like, when you were chasing a march, sometimes it got a little weird. So I'm definitely eager to see how that goes. And, of course, optimizing the interface uh, is a kind of catch-all for a bunch of things they may have done, but also could be very awesome. I'm super eager to get back into Champions of Olympia and just see how that goes, and maybe host another tournament card up in the top if you want to see the previous season champions from 254 obliterate literally everybody. Uh, in other optimizations, the new mail system uh, is coming in. New mail system? 
New governors, oh, now governors, receive more detailed classification of battle reports. That could be amazing. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe they're going to, like, group up barbarian battle reports into, like, one thing, and then you could tap into it. That wouldn't be the worst. I mean, like, it's kind of spamming your inbox. You get 500 barb reports when you run around and hit a few barbs. Optimize the new commander experience system. This is very important, by the way. Should have said something about this at the start of the video. This has huge implications. We need to very much talk about this. When a commander reaches the highest level allowed by the current star level, experience obtained will be stored. The stored experience will take effect directly after the commander hits the next star level. This is doing two things, two very important things. Number one, if you have a commander that's like five stars and you're just stuck, you can keep obtaining experience so that when you get it to six stars, huzzah, you can start up the commander and then get all the experience that you have saved up. So that's really big for new players. But number two is that they could be adding new star levels in the future, folks. Here it is. Here it is. It doesn't say they're doing it, but this is the sort of thing that will be foundational, potentially, to adding new levels to commanders and making it so that it takes a ton of experience to level them up. I, I, it's possible that they're adding that to the game. I think the chances of that are maybe low because it would be a lot of work to add new levels to commanders and potentially add more complexity to the talent trees. Oh my God, what a massive, massive amount of work that would be. But I'm just saying that if I were going in and making it so that you could have even more star levels, that's something that perhaps I would consider doing. Just throwing it out there. I don't think you should save your gold stars for that. I think maybe they would add a different kind of star potentially. I don't know. I mean, maybe they would just use gold stars. But I think the thing that you need to keep in mind that's nice is that now you're not losing experience when you're capped on star level. So that's great. Even if you use a four-star commander for like ever, and then at some point you actually want to level them up to be the primary it's even good in that situation because, like, boom, you'll have a ton of experience ready to go. I think that'll be really nice to have and is just one more signal that, like, if you're not going to use them as a primary right now, don't star them up. You even get to save the experience, which is pretty awesome. I, I don't know what would have prompted them to make that change unless something might be coming later, which makes having more star levels relevant. Uh, but, I don't know, maybe that's something new governors were complaining about. The Chronicle, bigger is better in the preparation seasons. This is, like... Yeah, what is this, going into KV preparation season? Going into KVK season one? The amount of flags in, in needed is different to flip the chapter? Okay. If this is preparation season, this might not even be KVK. This might just be like some home kingdom stuff. So much smaller number of flags. That might be a signal that this was always too large, or it might be a signal that they're making new kingdoms smaller. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, I'd have to look into it more. Definitely let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. They've optimized gathering skill descriptions on some commanders without changing their effects. This always makes me raise an eyebrow, but I will definitely review those the second this patch is live to tell you what is different. We've optimized the immigration rules display. Now you can see the commanders and equipment that are restricted. I think that's 10 out of 10. Good. That's good to know when you're going to migrate back. And alliance-related permissions have been added to the secondary password protection. So, um, yeah, I... Dude, you definitely got to keep your account secure. Oof, all that drama. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments about what you think Queen Tamar of Georgia is going to have for talent trees. I think that that combination of gathering, leadership, and also support could be amazing for both open field and gathering, just like Joan of Arc, but maybe better because the leadership tree is better, but I also think it's unlikely, but it would be, like, why not, you know? Like, why not release an epic that's really awesome? I think it would be pretty cool if they did that, a Joan of Arc tier, Sun Tzu tier epic, but as soon as that goes live, we're going to review it, so subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a thing, and check out the cards that I put up at the top if you want to see any of these other events that I've talked about. I'll probably have five full videos lined up for you to check out. Watch them, and until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.